Namaste. In this video, I would like to talk about my new book, Hindu Mathematics, What They Did Not Teach You at School and Why. Uh, so before I begin, just a few short words about myself and how I came to write this book. So I am a theoretical physicist and I did my PhD from IIT Kanpur in 2010. And after that, I worked for several years as a researcher in India, Germany and South Korea. And uh, during my work, I was obviously uh, acquainted with mathematics. I had to use mathematics a lot in the course of my work as a theoretical physicist. But during the whole time uh, as a student and as a researcher, my idea about the history of mathematics was that it was basically a Greek and a European phenomenon. It's something that originate, was originated by the Greeks. And there was a small gap uh, during the Dark Ages and then during the rena Renaissance in Europe, um, yeah, um, the development of mathematics was taken on further by the Renaissance mathematicians in Europe. So, uh, and in, during, this, during the course of this narrative, during my, during my days as a student in India, I would occasionally hear statements from other people, from my some of my friends or from some media figures that uh, actually the Indian civilization was very uh, had very advanced knowledge of uh, mathematics, science, um, <coughs> and that um, many of the things which were uh, used in Europe were actually known in India since many uh, centuries earlier. For example, I heard sometime in uh, 2009 or so that the Pythagoras theorem, uh, the theorem known, known as the Pythagoras theorem was used in India about centuries before Pythagoras was born. And that time I was always very, very dismissive about these ideas. I thought that these are just uh, highly over enthusiastic people, pro-Hindu people um, who want to um, show, show everything about Hinduism, Hindu civilization in a good light and say that they knew everything and so on. So I was very dismissive about such claims. Uh, however, this was this was sometime in the year 2012 when I was in Bochum in Germany as a researcher. I uh, happened to come across an article by an 18th century mathematician, Scottish mathematician called John Playfair in um, um, the Royal Asiatic Society of Edinburgh. So he wrote about some astronomical tables which he had uh, come into possession of. These tables were ancient tables from India and he analyzed those tables and then he's, one of the statements he made in this uh, article was that uh, the Indians used the theorem known as the Pythagoras theorem centuries before Pythagoras for predicting eclipses and this was for me the turning point because I thought how how many things have I dismissed um, that uh, when people said that these things belong to the, 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 the to the Hindu civilization they, they, these things were known in the Hindu civilization and how many things were really true and how many had I just dismissed without uh, without a second thought based on the basis of prejudice so I started, uh, this this got me started on a huge uh, voyage of uh, discovery, so to speak, of uh, Indian mathematics, of the tradition of mathematics in the Hindu civilization. And since I was uh, working in the universities in Germany, in I was in, first in Bochum, then I was in a city called Kaiserslautern, uh, I had access to all the uh, research articles to all the resources and so it, it was like you know I, I had access to the libraries uh, in the university and I dug out information one after the other and I was really astounded at the scope of uh, the the mathematical uh, knowledge that existed in, in ancient and medieval India and I was also really flabbergasted at uh, so much of this mathematics that we learn in school today. Uh, actually, everything comes from India. So I decided to write all these things, uh, collect all these things. I wrote a series of articles on my blog and um, then it went to cold storage because of work and other uh, engagements. And <clears throat> it's only now later that I've had the time to finish uh, the book. Okay, so now the book, what the book is about in more detail. So uh, the book is the title, first let me begin with the title of the book. It says Hindu Mathematics, what they did not teach you at school and why. So Hindu Mathematics, so of course the focus is on the mathematical content of the Indian civilization. So, and in this book, um, the, the main contributions, the major contributions of India across centuries are documented be it in the field of arithmetic, the number system, in trigonometry, in um, algebra, 
uh, and also in the fields of linguistics, prosody, and the related fields of combinatorics, like permutations and combinations, and even uh, the field of uh, calculus, like differentiation and integration, which are usually attributed to Newton and Leibniz, um, uh, they were actually used in India in a very uh, sophisticated form, like the Taylor series, uh, the series known as the Taylor series today, were discovered by the Kerala mathematicians for uh, centuries, you know, in the, in the 15th, uh, 14th, 15th centuries uh, in Kerala, in India. So uh, I discuss about all these things, and then also discuss about how the mathematics uh, from India was transmitted to Arabia uh, during the um, yeah, um, 9th, 10th centuries during the time of Al Khwarizmi, and then it became known as um, uh, Al Khwarizmi's contributions. For example, Al Khwarizmi is known as the um, inventor of algebra, although, you know, like I show in the book that it was actually the mathematics of Brahmagupta that he uh, took over. Then uh, yeah, so and then I talk about possible uh, transmissions of uh, math the calculus from from India to Europe. These are the, so this pertains to the mathematical content. Okay, the Hindu mathematics. Mathematics is one part. The other part is also Hindu. So in this context, what makes it what made it possible that all this mathematics flourished in the Indian subcontinent in the Indian civilization? For we know that in Europe. The atmosphere was highly not non-conducive for the uh, flourishing of mathematics. So you know, we know that in Europe it took centuries before the idea of zero was accepted. It took centuries before the idea of uh, inf infinities were were accepted there, and uh, it was very much um, inimical for the development of mathematics. The atmosphere in Europe during the um, uh, Middle Ages. But what was it special about the Indian civilization, the Indian subcontinent that made it really so um, conducive to the growth of mathematics? So in this book, I show that it is uh, a pecu the peculiarity, the, sp the sp specific feature of the Indian knowledge system, of the Indian philosophy, of the Indian worldview, of the hin Hindu worldview that made the flourishing of this branch of uh, knowledge possible. And not just mathematics, but all kinds of... Um, uh, fields of knowledge were uh, were, were promoted in uh, in the Indian civilization, and I show this on the basis of uh, uh, comparisons with Indian philosophical statements from the Vedanta, from Upanishads, from the Bhagavad Gita, that uh, the sacred knowledge and the secular secular knowledge of uh, the world, uh, so, so the so-called Paravidya and the Aparavidya, they are both. Um, uh, they, they both have their rightful place in the Indian civilization and it is not like in the West where um, uh, knowledge of the spirit is is uh, decoupled from the knowledge of matter and then of course we have a lot of inconsistencies when um, when Christians uh, enthusiastically claim something like Christian science or when um, modern uh, science uh, Western science talks about things like consciousness which 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 is um, difficult to explain in terms of purely materialistic things. So, uh, so this is a very uh, this is a, this I think is a very um, important uh, contribution of the book in this regard. This because it is also of interest to people who are interested in Indian philosophy and uh, the yoga traditions and so on to see that okay, it is India was not just in the um, uh, yoga and meditation uh, fields uh, so so developed, but also in the hard sciences like mathematics, and also this is to see the connections between these two fields. Okay, and uh, one further thing which I have spoken about in this book, very important uh, from my uh, from my point of view, is that yes, uh, there is a lot of ignorance in this in, in the world today about the Hindu contributions to um, mathematics, to knowledge in general, and about the true picture of Hinduism uh, in the Hindu civilization. But my my issue was yes, this uh, this ignorance exists, which is why I have written this book. My issue was, why does this ignorance exist in the first place? This was for me also a very uh, intriguing question because in school I never heard about all these um, ideas, about all these things. Instead, what I heard about in school was about Hinduism was that it is just full of the caste system and discrimination, social discrimination and uh, all these kind of negative things. Uh, so I made it also my business in this book to, to investigate these factors, these aspects like why are... Uh, these things not known, the, uh, the real contributions of the Hindu civilization not known, and why is a negative picture uh, so prevalent in today's worldview? 
uh, and this is a very very complicated uh, subject uh, so I had to in, in, um, in, investigate this issue from the point of view of politics from the point of view of uh, history uh, religion and uh, even academic movements throughout the years to come at a um, to come at a understanding of this phenomenon so the book is available on Amazon and uh, I will be very happy if you uh, buy the book if you leave a review if you read the book and if you like it just leave a review on Amazon and if you like um, just I'd be happy to hear feedback from you regarding the book thank you